morning. Welcome back. It's Catholic Connection. It's a Friday morning. Good to be with you on a Friday. And we are live from Rome. The Year of Mercy closing this weekend on Sunday. You also have the consistory where archbishops are elevated to cardinals. That's taking place this weekend. It's a very, very busy weekend here in the EW chain offices. And nobody's getting the weekend off for obvious reasons. So they're going to be working hard, bringing you all the latest information here from Rome. And make sure you check out the great coverage. Stay tuned to Ave Maria Radio, obviously, because we are connected to EWTN. But you can also find out information online, AveMariaRadio.net and EWTN.com. Well, guess who just, the wind just blew in. Hello, my friends. Sit down. Thomas just arrived. How are you? We're on the air. Yeah, go ahead. Sit. We'll do the hugs later. <laughs> Good to see you. Grab the mic and let's chat. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? All right. Well, I'm great, but I'm dying to talk to you about what's going on. By the way, just again, if you're listening, we are now talking with Dr. Thomas Williams, and he is a professor, theologian, speaker, writer, and has been writing a lot about the election. And, of course, his great work can be found on Breitbart and other places. But you've been following what's happening in the United States with Steve Bannon. I have. And it's very, it's it's not just a discouraging, it's, it's outright mean, and, I mean, it, it's easily, I think, slanderous and, and, and libelous. What was your take on, first of all, when you heard the way they were labeling him, what, what was your first reaction? Well, knowing the man, I, I first laughed. I thought it was almost a joke because the epithet they're using, racist, white supremacist, uh, anti-Semite, these different things they're calling him are so patently false to anyone who knows him, and they can only get away with it because they assume that the, the large majority of the population doesn't know him. Um, it, 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 and after my after my immediate reaction came one of a bit of anger because mm-hmm. when you see he's kind of he's a friend of mine honestly he's been my boss for three years now but he's also a friend he's a good guy he's fighting the good fight and to see someone like that trashed really um, there's a lot of anger there's a lot of bile behind it uh, because he beat them mm-hmm. I, I mean I really think it's a vengeance that especially the mainstream media you know you've been doing this playing this game for a long time. They can be so vicious when they feel threatened, and he beat them at their own game. Uh, so this is something that I think it's really an out-and-out warfare against him, but they're resorting, as you said, to the very lowest, the vilest form of, of smearing and, uh, and libel. It's, it's really terrible. Now, I did see a story this morning when I was preparing for the show on Breitbart that the, the um, Anti-Defamation League seems to be backing off a little bit. What's the latest with that? Well, they are, and they are because of something very important. There are a number of... Uh, high-ranking, if you can put it that way, Jews, very important uh, leaders in the Jewish community that have stepped forward and said, we have scoured the site of Breitbart for the last several years, and there is nothing anti-Jewish anywhere on the site. In fact, they're one of the greatest proponents of Israel. They're always standing up for the Jews. They're Steve Bannon personally founded Breitbart Jerusalem because he wanted the Jewish voice coming out of the Middle East in Breitbart itself. The co-owner of Breitbart, along with Steve Bannon, is a guy named uh, Larry, don't remember his last name right now, uh, who's Jewish, 100% Jewish. I mean, it, it's, it's so silly to hear these things. And so what they're doing is waking up. They immediately bought into, as soon as you say they're anti-Semitic, people get all hot and bothered. But if you actually stop to look at the facts, it's patently ridiculous. But in, in this day and age where facts don't matter, common sense doesn't matter, truth doesn't matter, reality doesn't matter, the attitude now is let's just throw it out there. Just like you know, Senator Reid the other day, he, he just bought into the whole thing and, and actually asked for uh, Trump to, to you know, make, change his mind about Man- Bannon and, and put somebody else in, in, in that same position. So basically they said we're going to throw as much you know what at the walls and see how much will stick. That is and unfortunately too much of it does. It's exactly right. And it, it's, it is mean, and it's, a, and it's something that who knows if we're going to ever move beyond it, because it's, it's very powerful. When you do that, it does work. And, and, and many people are not going to do the research. They're not going to look for the facts. They're just going to hear this. Then they're, by word of mouth, they're going to say, did you hear that Steve Bannon is like this and this and this? You wouldn't believe how many people have written to me this week, knowing that I work for Breitbart, and say, is this true about Steve Bannon? Is this true? Or some even more up in arms saying, how can you work for this outfit that has this guy at the head of it, without even knowing the facts? Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the emotion and the, the lack of, of thinking is just it's driving me absolutely nuts. We saw it before the election, and now it's even worse. What can we do, and, and we're going to take a quick break in a minute, but from a Catholic perspective, as a theologian and someone who um, is, is a very devout Catholic yourself, how do we respond to this? Because... I understand that we're going to be persecuted. I get that. Okay, we're Christians. <laughs> it comes with the territory. But we also don't roll over and play dead and allow this kind of, because this is downright evil. Well, I think, you know, Christians are called to fight the good fight. 
and that's a spiritual battle, but it's also a battle uh, right here in society. We have to fight for the truth, and we have to do it charitably. We have to do it truthfully. We can't resort to the same tactics that, that the enemy uses, but at the same time, we can't roll over and play dead. That would be just to, to concede the battle, and the problem is that people are in the mix, and people get affected by these things. And, you know, if, if Steve Bannon himself hadn't fought so hard during this election, we would have Hillary Clinton as our president right now. Mm -hmm. And we would all be suffering in the first place, the, the, the millions of babies that are aborted. But, I mean, everyone would be suffering. The religious liberty, I mean, we could go on and on and on about right. all the things that would be happening that won't be happening mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right, because of this fight. I'm just trying to figure out what's the best. I mean, obviously, we have to continue to do what we do here on Catholic Radio and in your work, but I'm just trying to figure out the best way to get this out to the public, the general public that doesn't follow, uh, you know, Catholic and other uh, conservative media outlets. Well, I think part of the problem is that this campaign in general has been one of focusing on the person. It's been personality po politics really more than platform politics, really more than the ideas and the things. And I think what we need to do for our, our Catholic people, and I think this is part of the reason, by the way, that Trump won. I think Catholics came together not behind the man, because a lot of no, us... it was the It was the platform. We knew that the results of this election, if Trump won, would be much better than the results if Hillary won. And so I think that that is... Catholics are leading, play, really playing a leading role in this idea of look to the platform, look to what's actually going on. Don't just talk about them. Did he say this? Did he do this? But what will happen if he's elected or if she's elected? Yeah, that was our whole approach on, on Catholic Radio. We couldn't openly endorse candidates, of course. But we kept saying you have to look at the platforms. We have to look at, at which party is going to be closer to following church teaching, especially in the area of life and, and, and family and, of course, marriage, which is, you know, huge. All right, let's take a quick break. Glad to see you. Glad you made it. I know Rome traffic is terrible, but it was fine because, you know, I, I, can, I can fill time. I talk a lot. 877-573-7825, talking with Dr. Thomas Williams. We're live in Rome. We're talking about some of the horrible things that are happening out there, just this, um, this anger and, and this, these vile things that are being said about people, and it's an attack. How do we respond? We'll be right back. It's a beautiful day here in Rome, and we are live at the EWTN News Studios, which just opened actually about uh, a month and a half ago, and everyone is so gracious, and they even had Italian cookies for me and offered to make me espresso. I said, okay, maybe after the show. But anyway, 877-573-7825. It's great to see my friend, Dr. Thomas Williams. And I know the traffic is nuts, so thank you. And don't worry about being late. That's what I figured. It's Rome. It's crazy. But uh, we're so glad to see you. And uh, Liz as well, Dr. Liz, Liz Lev. Liz is great. Very busy this week. She is. I, yes. I had lunch with her. And part of the reason, too, is I dropped her off at work en route here. So, yes, I just saw her, and she's doing fabulous. And she's doing a lot of the tours with corporate travel this week. We have she about is. 20 yeah, groups the, that are the in. Different, yeah. um, the, bishop, the different cardinals. Uh, she's doing it for Archbishop Supich, and she's also doing it for Tobin. Great. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so we're talking about all the negativity that's out there and what the best way for us as believers, trying to be truthful but loving but firm at the same time. It's getting, I, I thought that maybe it would die down by now, but they just, I, was, I just ran into Sheila Lagminas from Relevant Radio on the Borgo Pio, and we were saying the same thing, and she says it's just they, they will not let go. And by they, that pronoun, I'm not only talking about the media, but I'm talking about, you know, certain government officials. It's It's... I've never seen anything like this. I never saw anything like this in terms of bias before the election, but almost all the stories I'm seeing from the secular press are an attack on this new administration. Well, it makes you realize, by contrast, how gentle they were with President Obama these years. With all the mistakes he's made, with the craziness that's gone on in the last eight years, they treated him with velvet gloves. And we see that the Trump was not even in office yet. They are putting up barriers every step he takes. Every person whose name is floated for a position gets trashed. Everything he says comes out, they, they parse it, take it apart, and trash it. It's really, they, they, are, they are bound and determined to destroy him if they can. They're shooting themselves in the foot, though. Because the New York Times put out a somewhat of a lukewarm apology, and part of the reason they did that was that they admitted they've lost a number of readers and subscribers. Uh, they are in debt up to their eyeballs, as is the New York Post, as, as major red ink. But they still keep doing this, and people sent a message about a lot of different establishments, media establishment, the media elite, the government elitist, the status quo there. And even, I think, a Catholic spoke up and said, you know what, in the church we have to be stronger on these issues. And yet the media, they are just, they keep doing this, they will not let go. And I think it's going to be to their own demise eventually. Well, there was a lot in the media. This came from Hillary Clinton's campaign, but also it was echoed in the media 
uh, that once the election happens, we have to come together as a nation immediately. And that's when they were assuming that Hillary Clinton was going to win because she seemed to be up by a large margin. Now that uh, Trump has, has won, they have thrown that out the window, and it's every man for himself. And they are really determined to, to thwart him if they can. And it, it just shows, I think you're right, though, they are shooting themselves in the foot because it's part of what helped him win the campaign. People were so upset with this absolute bias and this absolute bile that's, that, that is floated in the media. They were saying, no, we're going to stand by this guy. He's the underdog in a way. And he, I don't think, will be hurt by it. He's a strong guy. He, he honestly feeds off negativity sometimes. He's willing to stand up to the fight. He just gets stronger. So no, we're going we're to see in the next few months how this plays out. And I don't think it's going to be good for those people that are, that are going to take this negative stand. Attacking a, a media outlet like Breitbart, I, I think it's 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 not only um, wrong, but I mean it's 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 dangerous because what you, what they're actually saying is that only people who share and they say this all along, but this is another example of it. Only people who share our views are welcome. Anybody else who is even slightly right of center, you don't matter. You're not you're not a human being. You're just you're just out there somewhere with three heads. Well, and I, I'm the first one to admit. It. You look at the titles on a, on Breitbart News's page, and it, it's pretty sensationalist. It's pretty in your face. Uh, they kind of pride themselves on that. It's not politically correct it's a different way of doing media and i can understand that's not everybody's cup of tea but to, from there to saying this is not media this is not legitimate that we have to you know trash this we have to completely negate it that's something that's just wrong you're right you're not allowing for this famous diversity that everybody seems right, to the liberal there are pl- plenty of liberal sites that do the same thing liberal news sites that have that type of you know sensational so that's to get the readers you know we get that but again, attacking a whole news outlet, it's this whole mentality. And the other thing I wanted to ask you as, as a theologian and someone who, who knows uh, you know, how we are designed, made in the image and likeness of God, and how we're supposed to try to connect the dots in thinking you know, and reason, which we talk about in the Catholic Church a lot, faith and reason. The reason has gone out the window. And, and I find that extremely frightening. And you can see how they live in such a bubble that these people who are pro-life, pro-family, pro-marriage, are painted negatively just because of those views. And those views are no longer, according to, to the media elite and the establishment elite, are no longer anything that we can even allow ourselves to think about. This is their bubble, this is their world, and all of a sudden it's, it's all shattering for them. So they have to place us in this corner. Well, I, you know, I think that they, in their bubble, feel that we've moved beyond that. That we're all very progressive. We realize that family is now a very malleable, very fluid concept, that gender is a very fluid concept, that all the things that we hold dear as Catholics, for them, no, we've gone beyond that medieval worldview. And when someone else comes forward and says, hey, I'm still pro-family, hey, I'm still pro-life, it's like somebody coming out of the past. And they just they can't get their minds around it. And so they'd already disqualified those positions as something that any sane civil person cannot have anymore. And it throws them for a loop. They, they just live in, in such another world. And I think that that's why you saw this rebellion, this basket of deplorables that Hillary Clinton talks about. That's a lot of us. That's people who just are very you know, aware of the way we're made and, and, and what values we need to hold in their traditional true value. They're traditional for a reason, because they're true. And the liberal elites just cannot see that. So where do you think this is going from someone who's in monitoring this and, and you're an American and you, you pay close attention to the news and, and you write about what's happening from a conservative Catholic perspective? Where do you think all this is going? Where, where's it going to end up? Because now they're planning major protests around the inauguration. They're planning a million woman march the day after the inauguration. Well, President Obama did a very bad thing. Uh, the Trump campaign asked him to please say something about the protest. When, when protests happened after his election, people were arrested because they were considered to be racist. Right now, Obama all of a sudden gets on the free speech wagon and says, I'm not going to tell them to be quiet, which was a really bad thing for a sitting president to do. And I think it does not bode well for the future of you know, these last months until the inauguration and in the first months of, of the Trump presidency. It's going to be, I think, a, a time of a lot of conflict a lot of angriness and uh, some polarization, the likes of which we haven't seen. We've seen a lot, but I think it's just getting worse before it gets better. How do you think the administration is going to handle this, and, and what did Steve say to you in terms of how he's handling all this, all this horrible criticism? They are with their eyes on the goal. They are moving forward. They've got a lot of work to do these days, so really what they're trying to do, and they're very good at it, is let let the criticisms and the complaints and the protests fall off their, all off their backs, and they're focusing on who we're naming, what our projects are, how we're going to fulfill our campaign promises. They're looking forward. Um, and I would encourage our listeners to do the same. But this is going to be, I think, an exciting presidency. I think there's a lot of reason to be hopeful. Um, Trump is not 
as angry and as divisive as sometimes he came across, I think, during the campaign. I think he really wants to build with, with, with a platform that's very serious. So I think if we give some time and watch what happens, we're going to see a lot of good things. Okay, so Catholics, um, how do we express the truth in love? And especially going into this holiday season where many families are going to be sitting around the Thanksgiving table and the Christmas table. As a matter of fact, I was uh, speaking with Jeannie Mancini the other day from the March for Life, and she actually had a friend of hers, Thomas, text her. They've been friends since college. That they have different political views, but they've been able to maintain that friendship. And she said, we are no longer friends. This, this woman texted Jeannie and said, our friendship is over, based on the election results. How do we handle that? You know, th- that scares me, because if something like this, which it's important, but at the same time, is it as important as a lifelong friendship? I wonder how we can so lose track of who we are and what's important in our lives that something like this can divide. This has happened to me too. Several of my friends really? have just said, I don't want to be friends with you anymore. They weren't my best friends of all time, but people that I've considered friends for a while. Uh, and they just, over this, boy, it, it's really scary to think you know, how much division there can be. You know? But were they Obama supporters? But you maintain your friendship with them when, when, when Obama won twice, right? They weren't really Obama supporters. Actually, I found this to be worse, I'm sorry to say this, among Catholics. Uh, people oh, who okay. just believed that Trump was a bad man in their mind. And they refused to look at the reality of Hillary Clinton and what she stood for. That, that was and something that came up off. over and over and over again with, with our listeners. So we were constantly talking about it. we're not voting uh, person, we're voting platform. Yes. And, and platform. I think that but many people forgot that. And I think that many people were very turned off by the personality of Trump, things he said, things he did, which, yeah, I mean, no one is supporting here, but at the same time, we, we are realists in this world, and we're looking for what a presidency will mean for the nation, not if we like this guy and we want him to be. We're not electing him as, as, uh, as one Michael Novak wrote. He said, we're not electing him pope, we're not electing him bishop, we're not electing him even, you know, to be a member of our family. We are appointing him to the presidency of the United States. What's he going to do there? Yeah. Well, keep us in your prayers, please, as to, because when I get home, I'm sure we're going to be seeing even more of this. But thanks for coming by. Appreciate it. Hang on during the break. I want to uh, say so long to you. And we're going to be chatting with Barb Listing from Right to Life in Michigan up next on a Friday morning edition of Catholic Connection. Our phone number is 877-573-7825. When's your next piece coming out for Breitbart? Uh, later today. Oh, good. Okay. And it's on. Is it on the election? Uh, it is not on the. This one's on uh, global warming. Oh, As you okay. know, I, I, I'm one of those horrible global warming skeptics. So I, whenever I see something <laughs> crazy come out, I can't resist uh, to, to say something about it. Oh, I can't wait to read that. I'll have to post that on Facebook as well. All right, my friends, we will be right back continuing our conversation. Barb Listing is going to give us her perspective on the pro life victories across the country, not only in the White House and in Congress, but many uh, governorships went to pro life. Mm-hmm pro-life men and women, and also state legislatures as well. So we'll be right back with Barb Listing from Right to Life in Michigan on a Friday. Stay tuned.